couple of lessons ago, we talked about continuity and we used this uh, informal definition of continuity. That is, a function is continuous if its graph can be drawn without lifting your pen off the paper. Um, and if you can't do that, there's said to be a discontinuity at the point where you had to lift your pen. Uh, the way we did that formally was we checked uh, whether the limit from the left is equal to the limit uh, from the right. And that meant that, um, that it approached the same value. So if the limit from the left was the same as the limit from the right, then we said the limit exists. And that was a good sign for continuity. We also checked whether the function existed at the point itself. Okay, so we checked that. And if the limit from the left and right was exactly the same value as the function at the point, then we could say formally that the function was continuous at the point in question. Okay, so um, that was just a you know a quick revise or, or a quick bit of revision of that concept. Let's just see how we go with sketching this graph here. So here's the graph. Um, it's not true for um, two. Now we can see why, because if two goes into this function here, uh, then um, uh, it's gonna produce a divide by zero error, which is a problem, okay? So what they want us to do is sketch the graph and what we've got is a quadratic over a linear. Now you gotta be aware that a quadratic over, your, over a linear is just a linear, okay? So what I'm gonna draw is, or, or do first of all, is factorize this numerator. So I'm gonna go f of x equals uh, two, one, x, x, both of them are negative. So it's gonna be x take two, x take one, all over x take two. Now what you can see here is that these cancel out, leaving us f of x equal x take one, so the standard x take one linear function, except because there was a restriction in f of x here, there still is a restriction on f of x here. So we're gonna say where x is not allowed to be uh, two. Okay, so even though this function will take it, the original form of the function won't, therefore this one still won't. Okay, and we went through that. I don't know whether you understood my weird change my name example, but this is kind of what I'm referring to here. Okay, so anyway, let's sketch this. Um, it's true for all values except two. So we know that the x-intercept is negative one. The y-intercept uh, when f of x is zero is also going to be one. Okay, and it's not true when x is equal to two. So what I'm gonna do is put two into it. Two take away one is one. So when x is two, y is one, and I'm going to open circle that point. Now let's sketch our function. And through there. So we can see our sketch, and what we're gonna do now is state the domain for which so there's A, A is the sketch. B, state the domain for which the function f of x is continuous. So it's continuous for x is all real numbers, not including two. So everywhere else, okay, um, it's continuous, except at the point two, it's not continuous, or there's a discontinuity um, at this point. And again, we could go on to prove that there's a discontinuity, it's fairly easy to do. Um, what the point in question is this one here, I just do f of two, and f of two doesn't exist. Um, and if it doesn't exist, therefore it's not continuous at the point. So yeah, there's, um, there's continuity. Okay, so now on to this idea of differentiability. Okay, so how are the two concepts related? Well, for a function f of x to be differentiable at a point, it's gotta be continuous at the point, okay? so you gotta do a continuity check. And once you're sure that it's continuous at the point, what we then do is we check for differentiability at the point, okay? Now here's where it gets a little bit kind of um, tough to understand. So the derivative f dash x must be defined at the point, i.e. a single tangent must be able to be drawn at x equals a. Now, many tangents can be drawn at some graphs like um, a sharp point or a cusp an asymptote or at an endpoint 
um, not a single tangent. So functions are not differentiable at these points. So we're going to say that functions are not differentiable at endpoints. I'll go on to explain this. Uh, they're not differentiable at cusps. Okay. Um, they're not differentiable at um, what's this? This one says sharp points. And there's another blank one there for which I'm not really sure what to write there. Hang on, I'm going to pause the video and have a think. Yeah, I'm not sure what the notes are looking for there, but we'll say something like um, at discontinuities. Okay, so these are places where functions are not differentiable. All right, so for each of the following functions, determine the values of x for which the functions are continuous, and then the values of x for, the fun where, for where the functions are differentiable. And what they want us to do is also sketch the gradient function. Okay, so we can see here, this is a parabola over an unrestricted domain. It's continuous for x as an element of reals, and it's differentiable. Therefore, if it's continuous everywhere, it's gonna be differentiable everywhere. Uh, what is the gradient function going to look like? So the way I usually draw these is I go that this is a zero gradient point. So it's going to be zero here. Okay, so the gradient function is going to be zero there. I can see that this part here has a positive gradient getting closer to zero. So it's going to go something like this. And then it's got a negative gradient, okay, starting um, at close to zero, so almost zero opening up to a larger value, okay? Now, I don't know about the scaling of this because I haven't got the actual function. I'm not gonna spend the time actually devising what the function actually is, but I know that if I've got a quadratic function, that the derivative is linear, and this linear function is gonna look something like this. Not too sure about the y-intercept, etc., etc. All right, so this thing here is a quartic. We can see it's over an unrestricted domain, so it's gonna be continuous everywhere and therefore differentiable everywhere. Okay, uh, quartics when derived turn into cubics. So we've got a zero gradient there, a zero gradient there, and a zero gradient there. So the derivative has three x-intercepts, which is kind of in keeping with um, cubics. Okay, so before this stationary point here, we can see here that we've got a negative gradient, okay? So this one here is gonna come in and get closer to zero. Then between here and here, we can see we've got a positive gradient, okay? So almost zero gradient here, and then a zero gradient here going positive in between with the middle being the highest value. Okay, between here and here, we've got a negative gradient. So it goes negative and back to zero here. And then here we've got a positive gradient. So it goes up like that. So there's that derivative function. And again, I'm just gonna claim here that that's, you know, without developing the function itself, uh, that's only a rough sketch. So I don't know whether that is the y-intercept or not, um, but it gives us an overall, overall idea of the shape of the derivative function, which is really what I'm interested in. That's, that's at its core what I wanna know about. Okay, all right, here's where it gets interesting. Okay, so this, function here, um, special students will know this, this one's the absolute value function, um, but doesn't matter um, whether you're in special methods, okay? What we can see here is it's continuous uh, for all real numbers. So you might think because it's been continuous for all real numbers, then it's differentiable for all real numbers, but it's not, okay? And here's why. All right, what we can see here is this graph here has a negative gradient, okay? And it's gonna be a constant negative gradient because this is linear. So let's say that it's this negative value here, whatever it is. All right, over here, we've got a positive gradient, okay? So we're just gonna draw that as a positive gradient. So we can see there that we've got this negative gradient all the way to this point here and a positive gradient from there. Now, here's the issue, all right? Now look at the gradient um, or the value of the derivative to the right of this point. And we can see here it's positive. Over here, we can see that it's negative. So what are we gonna say the gradient is? Like if this was 
f of x. If I found f dash x and then said, what is f dash zero? This function here, um, the derivative function is gonna kind of not really know what to do because is it this value on the left hand side or is it this value here on the right hand side? And so what actually happens with maths is we say that actually we're gonna open circle and open circle and f dash zero is not defined, okay? Because we don't really know whether the gradient is this positive value here or this negative value here. So we're gonna say it's differentiable for all values of x except at zero, okay? So it's not differentiable at zero. Everywhere else, it can produce a gradient, no worries. If you go f dash two, no problems. f dash three, no problems. f dash negative five, no problems, okay? The problem is at f dash zero. So that's the only point for which we're not gonna give you a gradient for, okay? Now this one here is a linear function. So we know that the derivative of a linear is a constant, okay? So it, uh, we can see here that this function one, one is gonna be y equals negative x plus one, All right? So its derivative is going to be um, dy dx is always negative one. So you might think, oh, well, if we sketch that, it's easy, All right? It's gonna be along there. All right, that's our derivative function, always going to be negative one. But the problem is that at this point here, okay, the function isn't continuous. And therefore, we can't return a derivative at that point, okay, because the point doesn't exist. Now, I know the derivative to the left, okay, we can see here it's got a gradient here and a gradient here. We approach the same value, but the point doesn't exist. And because the fact that the point doesn't exist, we can't return a gradient there. If you go, what is f dash two? We can see that the point doesn't exist on f of x. Therefore, we can't say, tell me what your gradient is at the point. So the best we can do really is to sort of go and do this. We're gonna go and draw a line from here to here and a line from here. And we can see here that f dash two is not going to be defined. So let's conclude that it's continuous for x is an element of real, not including two. And we're gonna say the same for the derivative. It's differentiable everywhere, but I'm not gonna give you a gradient at two itself because, well, it's not continuous there. Right, so hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. Okay, now this function here, we can see that we could draw this bit, have to lift my pen up and then draw this bit here. So it's continuous for x is an element of all reals except two. Okay, so because it's not continuous there, it's also not gonna be differentiable there. So we're also gonna say it's differentiable for x is an element of reals, but also I can't return a gradient at two because the function, the original function doesn't exist at the value. Okay, ooh, this is a good one. Okay, so this function here is continuous. So I'm gonna draw this part here, lift my pen up, rejoin here, draw this and this. So we can see that it's continuous for X is an element of all real numbers, not including one. So you might think it's gonna be differentiable for all real numbers, not including one, but the problem exists. Oh, actually, I think I forgot to draw a derivative for the hyperbola. Okay, so um, the first thing to note with a hyperbola, um, you imagine a hyperbola, x to the negative one. If we get dy dx of that, it's negative x to the negative two, which is negative one over x to the two. So the derivative of a hyperbola is an inverted truncus. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, uh, and let's just see, you can see here that the gradient is negative. Okay, so we've got big negative to small negative gradient. Okay, so big negative gradient to small negative gradient. What about this one? So here we've got a negative gradient, small negative gradient to big negative gradient. So we can see here that we're gonna get something like that. Okay, so graphically we can see what happens and mathematically we can see that we get the same thing. 
All right, back to this one. So differentiable, okay? So we would say maybe differentiable for all real numbers, not including one itself. But the issue is also around this point here. Now you notice here that the gradient coming into the point itself is, uh, that's a negative gradient, and out of the point is positive. So we've got this side here saying, hey, I'm a negative gradient. This side here saying, I'm a positive gradient. So what does the function do for a derivative at the point itself? It says, uh, well, I'm not gonna return one to you. So we're gonna conclude that this function here is differentiable for all real numbers, not including this one here and the four. Okay, but everywhere else, it will return a um, gradient for you. So, you, if, you know, you can do f dash two, no worries. f dash three, no worries. f dash five. The only problems are at f dash four and f dash one. They're the two points that uh, the function is not differentiable for because here we can see we've got a negative, uh, a positive gradient there and a negative gradient on this side. All right, so what does the derivative look like? Well, we know that the derivative of a, um, a quadratic is a linear. So we've got a zero gradient here. We've got a negative gradient here, so it's gonna go like this. All right, so negative, then it goes positive to this point here. All right. Now, we can see here, and again, none of these values are to scale. I don't know whether that's the y-intercept. Again, I'm, I have to work out what all of these functions are to do this. And the point of getting these derivative functions um, plotted, uh, not really to work out or find the rule for any of these things here. So we're not gonna worry about it. We're just worried about the overall shape. Okay, so this is a negative gradient here. Okay, so it's a negative gradient from here to here. So I'm just gonna draw a random negative gradient. Let's make it, actually, I probably could peg the gradient. Three on four, uh, what is it? This point here is one comma three. This point here is four comma zero. So what's our gradient? Negative three on four, I think. Uh, what's the rise? Three on four, yeah, so it's negative three on four. So it's around about here, all right? So we're gonna draw that all the way along here. So we've got a negative gradient from here to here. And again, you can see that the gradient here is positive. The gradient here is negative. So for the derivative function, we're gonna open circle both of them to indicate that we're not gonna return a gradient at these points here. All right, what about here? Well, we can see here that we've got a positive, okay, a positive through to a zero gradient. So let's go positive gradient. I don't know, any sort of positive gradient is fine. So let's go um, something like that, so positive. Whoopsie, went too far. So we're gonna draw that. So we've got positive y values or positive dy dx values down to a zero gradient. And then here you can see we've got a negative gradient. So we're gonna continue that through. So again, you can see we've got non-matching gradients on the left and right. Therefore, we're gonna open circle that, okay? To indicate that it's not differentiable at these points. So again, just to summarize, f dash one and f dash four would be strictly forbidden Okay, can't do it because um, of the values of the gradients to the left and the right of the point you're trying to get a gradient for. Okay, they're competing. This is saying I'm positive four. This one's saying I'm negative three on four. Okay, so what do you wanna be at the point? Well, I don't know. I, I can't choose left or right, so I'm just gonna say I'm not differentiable at the point. All right, so let's finish up by looking at I think this is the last example. Oh no, this one here, that's one, that one's gonna be fast. Ooh, got a bit here. Okay, all right, I'll just try to speed this up. All right, this one here, I want you to change this example slightly to be this. All right, so we've got these hybrid functions here and what they want us to do is sketch the derivative function. Okay, so this one, we will do an accurate sketch of the derivative function this time, not these sloppy ones that I'm doing uh, for these ones. 
Okay, so let's draw this. So we've got when x is greater than zero, we're, we're this parabola here. So zero goes in and it's one and it's included. Uh, we'll get the turning point x squared plus 2x plus 1, take away 1, plus 1. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah. x plus 1, all squared. Uh, so it obviously turns here. Oh, God, it's a perfect square. Yeah, of course it is. Okay, so it is going to sort of come down, turn, and come back up. Now it's going to be x plus, whoops, that's the wrong way. So it turns here, comes through, and it's just going to go up from there. So when x is 1, 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4 up here. Okay, it's supposed to be sort of parabolic. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so that's from uh, x greater than or equal to zero. Now I'm going to check this one here. So it's x plus one from negative two um, to zero, inclusive of this point, not inclusive of that. So we're going to chuck zero in and we can see it's one. So it's continuous at the point and negative two. Uh, so negative two goes in, that's going to be negative one. So it's here and it's included. All right. Uh, we can see that the x-intercept is negative one. So it goes through there. So negative one, zero. This endpoint is negative two comma negative one. And this continues indefinitely that way with the y-intercept at one. Okay, so there is our graph. Okay, so we can see it's linear. Then it goes to quadratic. Okay, so what is our derivative? Well, Let's derive this, 2x plus 2 and 1. What are our domains? So let's hold off on the domains. What we'll do is just sketch this linear here. Okay, so it's 1 between negative 2 and 0. So the gradient is 1 between negative 2 and 0. So I'm going to draw my horizontal line there. And then the gradient is 2x plus 2. Okay, so at zero, it's going to be two. So we've got a point there. And we've got two x, so that means it's a positive gradient. So when x is one, y is four. So it's gonna continue from there like that. Now you'll notice that I've been careful not to draw any big thick circles like this. And the reason for that is we can see that our gradient function okay, is different on both sides of x equals zero. So on this side here, it's saying it's one. On this side here, it's saying it's two. So what we're essentially going to do is say that the gradient is not defined at zero. All right. Now it continues indefinitely in the positive direction of x. So we just put an arrow on that. So we can see here that it'll still return gradients for all values above zero. All right, what about this endpoint here? Well, what we do with endpoints is we note that the gradient is also not defined at endpoints. The reason being there's no gradient to the left of this point here and there is a gradient to the right of this point here. So we don't know what the gradient is going to be at the point itself, so we don't include it. So our value there is negative two comma one. This point here is 0, 1. This point here is 0, 2. And that's all the values we need. So now let's put our domain in. So it's this function here for the values of x greater than 0. And this one is going to be true for x is an element negative 2, comma, 0, not included. Okay, you can write that with interval as well if you want. In fact, it'll probably look better if I put that in with interval. zero to positive infinity. Okay, for our next one, 
what we're going to do is sketch this and sketch this. And we can also get part of the derivative at the moment, 2x plus 2 and 2. All right, so let's sketch the parabola. Um, is it the same one as before? No, it's not. Okay, so it's 2x plus 2. So we've got this um, here. And what do I know? I know that it Well, let's just complete the square. I could have done that by hand. I don't know why I typed that into the calculator. Uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, take away 1 plus 2. x squared plus 1. So it's negative 1, 1. So it turns uh, here and comes up, All right? So we imagine it coming up then continuing something like that. Okay, so we can see that that point is included. All right, let's do this one here, 2x plus two. So jam in zero, then we can see it returns two, so it's continuous. This is definitely a continuous function. And we've got a positive gradient. Um, uh, 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 actually, let's get a second point, shall we? Um, two, let's do zero when X is zero, Y is two, negative two goes in. Let's put negative two in two times negative two is negative four, negative two and X intercept is at negative one. Okay. So let's run it through there. All right, so let's see what our gradient function will look like. So we know that the gradient is 2x plus 2 uh, from 0. So we're going to put 0 into this, and it says that my gradient is 2 here. So I'm going to put that in. 2 goes, or 1 goes in, 4 comes out. So we get a straight line there. Now what we're going to do is with the gradient to the left of that is 2. So it's always going to be 2. All right, so what's the domain of the derivative? Okay, so you'll notice that here what we did was excluded the end point or the, this point here, the join point, because the gradients didn't match up on either side. But this one here, what we're going to do is note that it's this 4 x is an element from 0 to positive infinity and it's this too from x is an element of negative infinity up to and including 0. Okay, so we're going to include it. Now why do we do that? Why did we not include it here and we do include it here? Because we can see here that the gradient to the left of this point, this, is, this side saying I'm 2 here, and we can see to the right of the point the gradient is also two as we approach from the right hand side. So the gradients actually match up here. Okay, so we can safely say that the gradient, if you ask me what is f dash two, I can tell you it's two because the right suggests it's two, the left suggests it's two. Why couldn't I do, uh, oh, I did f dash two there, get rid of that, f dash zero. Okay, so I can safely say f dash zero is two because two from the left, two from the right. Whereas this one here, we couldn't do f dash zero because this one's saying it's one from the left and two from the right, two different values. Okay, so very subtle difference um, between these two. All right, and what we often note is when we draw the graph, like this is not, not, the best graph. And the reason for that is if the gradients are the same from the left and the right, what we should get is what we call a smooth join or join smoothly. That is the gradients just blend into each other quite nicely. It goes from linear to quadratic seamlessly. Okay. 
All right, so this slightly quirky one here, we've got the third root function. So that's just another way of writing this one here. So remember the third root function looks pretty much the same as the square root function, except it continues for the negative values. Now, what do we know here? Well, we know that f dash x equals one third x to the negative two thirds. Uh, that is going to be f dash x equals uh, one over three, and that's the third root of x all to the power of two. Okay, so what do we know? Um, well, let's just think about what the gradient is. So we can see here that we've got this, um, this positive gradient here. Okay, so we've got um, extremely positive through to getting lower and lower. Okay, so very positive gradient, getting lower and lower. Over this side here, we've got uh, getting lower and lower through to a very positive gradient. Okay, so small, okay, a small gradient over this side here, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, so what we note here is f dash x is not going to be defined um, uh, for x is equal to zero. So we're going to say that this derivative here is true for all values. Uh, of x, but not including zero. So we can't work out f dash zero. Now, why? Well, you can see here that it's not continuous at zero. Okay, we can see here that by putting zero into the derivative function, you're going to cause a divide by zero error. Okay, we can also see that if I was to draw tangents, this function here, at zero itself, what happens is the tangent is vertical. Okay, and for a vertical line, tangent is not defined. All right, so I think I'll leave it at that. The video is out to 32 minutes. I've got these two cool questions here and I'd love you to have a go at them yourself, okay? Um, this one here from a trial company paper, if you've understood any of what happened up here, this one here should be a walk in the park. This one here is a fairly brutal, well it goes from accessible too brutal. Okay, so have a go at both of these. And again, for this question here, carefully check the wording. Good luck with um, this, guys. And there's your questions that I want you to have a bit of a go at. We'll go through these two VCAR problems or this VCAR problem and this trial company paper problem back in class on Wednesday or Thursday when I see you next.